Oh, what's up, people? Dobbs of Waters right here, and welcome to another rank video. And today, our rank is. Pokemon! Now, as you guys know, Pokemon has been dear to my heart for many, many years. It was it's as old as I am. It's 25 years old, and oh my freaking god, to be honest, it's a dream come true. Literally, everybody had these. Literally, they were all throwing them in the park and everything. But, besides that, we had Pokemon cards. We had the most expensive card in the world, the Charizard. But also, besides that, we had the films. Everybody went to see them in the, in the theatres, got the DVDs, got the VHSs, got them on the iTunes. Whatever you pick. But, there is one thing that everybody always had at the beginning of everything. The video games. Now... With Pokemon games, it was super difficult for me because I wanted to go ahead and pick every single one of them. But, to be honest, you have yourself two of the opposite games. So I'll just say it out loud. Pokemon, um, Pokemon, let me just say it out loud. Um, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. I'm going to put them as one, one entry. But I'm going to put Emerald into another entry because it is a more of a different type of game. It has extra stuff and things that went down or went up. So you guys understand that, okay? So I've got nine, I've got 18 um, numbers right here, people. I am not including the spin-off. So there's no Rangers, there's no Rumbles, there's no Stadium, there's no Pokemon Snap. Even though we're looking forward to Pokemon Snap 2, I'll be very excited for that. But anyhow, the five senses of gaming for Pokemon are, ah, number one, the story. How good is the story? Is it following up? Is it fun? Is it boring? Is it straightforward? Number two, the Pokemon that are in that game. So, how many there is there? Is it, was it the right pick? Were they good looking? You know, were they good, good to look at? Were they really good? You know what I mean? Number three, the end game. Now, pretty much, what can you do after you beat the game? So, pretty much after you beat the main champion, what can you do after that? Number four, the soundtrack. How good is the soundtrack? Is it beating? Is it freaky? Is it cool? I like it. And number five, the difficulty. How hard is the game? Now, like I'm saying now, I'm not talking about people playing Nuzlocks. I'm talking about how the game starts from the, from the beginning as a normal playthrough without you knowing what could happen next. So, I'm going to start from 18 to number 11 and make them go extremely quick as soon as I can. And then num number 10 to number 7, a little bit slower and then... Six and number one, I'll put more detail for them for you, okay? The pictures will be around here somewhere. Let's cue the music. And let's go and catch them all. Number 18, you guys might hate me for this. I don't like black and white one. I really don't like. Pokemon black and white is, in my eyes, I hate it. It's like me, oh God, I just don't like it. I really don't. Story, I didn't follow it. I know it was like about some sort of warriors or some shit. I just couldn't get into it. I really couldn't. Pokemon, to me, in black and white, a lot of them, to me, didn't even look like Pokemon. They felt like something from Digimon, in my eyes. Uh, Endgame. Endgame was alright. I enjoyed it. Finding, um, like, the Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landrus and Volcarona. I mean, they did them in the Endgame. Um, soundtrack. Actually, soundtrack was really good. Don't get me wrong. Soundtrack was really, really fun. I enjoyed it. Difficulty. Holy shit, it's hard. It really is. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, oh, Pokemon games are all easy. They're not. Look, sometimes they can be quite difficult. And I can actually say this right now. Black and White 1 is actually quite a hard game. And I really have lost quite a few times on that game. So, yeah. Number 17, Black and White 2. Once again, it's pretty much exactly the same as Black and White 1. The story was a little bit better, but still I didn't want to follow it because like, I found it quite boring. Pokemon. Uh, same again. Uh, didn't, like the, didn't, like the, didn't like the list. I really didn't. I think it was the wrong choice to pick. Endgame was a bit better. Had the same things again, but with a bit of extra stuff, including uh, Victini, if I remember. That was good. Uh, soundtrack was a lot better, to be honest. A uh, lot more bitching, much more catching. A uh, difficulty. Fuck me, it was even harder! Oh my god, way harder! Oh my god! I was like, what the fuck are they doing with Pokemon? This game was super difficult. And I weren't like, playing like I would normally play. I was playing like, strategic, like I always have been in Pokemon. And my god, it was difficult. It really was difficult. And I always played with Kofi, um in that game, I always played with uh, Kofagrigus. 
and Scrafty, and Scrafty we always had Moxie, and he kept on dying every single second. I was pissed off. So, yeah, that's my number 17. Number 16, Sun and Moon. Now, Sun and Moon is like a lot of people say, do you love it or do you hate it? To be honest, I do enjoy it. It's a fun story game, but I think to me, it was extremely short. The Pokemon, I do like the Pokemon. The Pokemon was a good choice. I really did like it. It was nice. Uh, the end game, uh, going after the tapus. I enjoyed the going after the tapus. A lot of people don't like the tapus, but I actually do enjoy them. It's a bit of Hawaii stuff. I like it. Soundtrack, uh, you can either you love it or you hate it. I actually enjoy it, but not as much. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, difficulty, piss easy. It was super easy. You can't really die in this game. It was that freaking easy. Literally going after the Komodos, with, um, the Komodo, the Janimos and them lot, they were quite difficult, but not as hard as black and white, no way. They were super, super easy to be honest. I think it's one of the most easiest games out of the whole entire Pokemon game series, to, in my eyes. One of the most easiest. Number 15, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now, with this one, story was a lot better. Pokemon were way better. Great choices of Pokemon. Now, I am not counting the Ultra Beasts. The Ultra Beasts were a bit of a tease and a bit of a shitter in my eyes. I don't really like the Ultra Beasts, to be honest. They do look cool, but oh, I don't think they're worth it, to be honest. They're not in my eyes. Endgame was awesome. Going through the um, the um, time warp with Sogleo or Lunala. Um, going into these different type of rings, hoping to get a shiny Pokemon or a legendary was sick. I like that. The uh, soundtrack was awesome. I did like the soundtrack. I really did. The difficulty was easy all the way through it until you get the big, to the big massive boss, Necrozma. Holy shit. Why did they make that guy so difficult? I was like, oh, this guy's going to be super easy. And then all of a sudden, all these buffs are going up to 100%. I was like, what the hell is this? I died against that boss at least 50 times. I couldn't beat that guy. Until one day I got super, super lucky and killed him with poison, which was luckily, happily, was done and dusted. Easy. Number 14. It's the OGs. Pokemon Red, Blue and Green. Now, please understand this. The story straightforward. We get this. The Pokemon. Legendary. Classics. Easy. Going. Everybody likes the OGs. The end game. You can only do one end game thing, and that was either collect the legendary birds if you haven't got them yet. But the main thing besides that is to fight Mewtwo. That was pretty much it. That was all you really needed to do, unless you want to go ahead and collect the rest of the Pokemon if you really want to, but that was it. Soundtrack. I like the soundtrack. It was very, very different. It could be very happy at one point, then it could be a bit mysterious, and then it could be extremely scary with La Lavender Town. And you guys know me about Lavender Town. Oh my god, super scary. Difficulty, um, for the OG game, uh, standard level to be honest. It depends on what starter you had. If you were Charmander, you were going to start off very, very difficult. Then start to get very easy, then super easy at the end. If you started as um, uh, Bulbasaur, you, it was pretty much a, a normal, steady game. It was like normal difficulty. If you played as Bulbasaur, it was either going to be easy, easy... A bit hard, easy, a bit hard. It was like up and down for that. So pretty much Charmander was like the hard all to easy. Bulbasaur was from um, easy to all the way to normal difficulty. Bulbs, um, um, Squirtle was pretty much easy all the way through it, to be honest. He was like the easy choice, if you guys want to know. <coughs> so that's my number 14 spot. I do apologise for the people who love that game series, but... I had to put it down low because there's way better games than that. Number 13, X and Y. Now, a lot of people like this game. I actually really do like this game. I really do. Story, I can agree. Story was a bit wacky. Except for the ending. Really do love the ending. Pokemon, fantastic choices. And it was the beginning of the Mega Evolutions. I love the Megas. I really do. A lot of people don't like them who are OG players like I do, but I actually do like them. I find it was a good taste of ch a ch chance of change. I did like that. I, was, I find that enjoyable. Endgame. 
Endgame was really, really good in my eyes. Going after some legendaries that you can go after, like the legendary birds. Mewtwo as well with the classic old um, soundtracks. I'll get to the soundtracks in a minute. But also going after um, Zygarde, which was fun too. Uh, soundtrack, killer. Love this soundtrack. And the difficulty as well, I think this game was extremely easy. Number 12, original gold and silver. Now, once again, please don't hurt me. Story, love the story. I really, really do. The Pokemon, great choices, to be honest. Endgame, love the endgame. Really do. Um, depending on which, which version you got, you can either go ahead and face the other legendary if you really want to, but you have to do particular things to do. Also, go after Zelebi, which was an event. But besides that... There was one thing that everybody wanted to do in the end game, was to go ahead and face all the gym leaders again, and also face Red. Now, Red was the pinnacle of all bosses. He was difficult, and yeah, unbelievably difficult. Uh, soundtrack was really nice. It was nice and smooth. And to me, there was nothing really superb about it. Um, some areas were a bit creepy, like the Unknown Dungeon and everything, but besides that, nothing else really caught my eye with anything saying it was amazing. I think it was a good soundtrack, but nothing really awesome except for the final boss fight. That was good. The difficulty. Um, easy in the beginning, and then it got a little bit hard midway, and then when you beat the champion there and you go over to Kanto, extremely easy until you face Red. Red was just like a killer waiting for you because it, he was really difficult unless you did not unless you leveled up a lot so that's what i'm saying number 11 let's go pikachu and let's go eevee now a lot of people were disappointed with this game but i was not disappointed i enjoyed this the story was straightforward it was pretty much pokemon red blue and green but a lot more concentrated on let on pokemon go because pretty much it was connected with pokemon go because you couldn't go ahead and fight riled Pokemon and then capture them with your Pokeball, all you had to do was just throw a Pokemon and see if you can catch it, and that was it. I found that a bit stupid, I really do. The Pokemon was pretty much the originals, which is great, don't mind it. Endgame. Endgame was really different, to be honest. Very different, because... <clears throat> sorry about that. You can, face the, you can face the legendary bird, fair enough. You can go ahead and face... Um, face Mewtwo, fair enough. But you can also face green. Oh my god, face green. That's a first. But besides that, you can also face these special champions who have one Pokemon only who is the most powerful Pokemon that they have. So you have to face it with the same Pokemon. So if you had a Charizard, you have to face their Charizard. And their Charizard is OP as shit. And there's a hundred and... There was 153 Pokemon in uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee because you have Mel Metal and Mel Tan, who were new and everything. So, there was lots of things to do in the end game, to be honest, for a Gen 1 remaster. Soundtrack, killer, awesome. Great remaster of the old Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow and Green. Difficulty, to be honest, extremely easy. I... Can't really say that it was hard at all, unless you face the um, end game fights against um, the same Pokemon as the champions. But besides that, it was super easy from the very get go. Number 10, Ruby and Sapphire. <clears throat> the story, love the story. Story's amazing. The Pokemon were a perfect choice for this game, including the new ones. End game. Endgame was fantastic, going after the Regis, going after Deoxys, going after Latios and Latias, going after Rayquaza. And I know some of them were in events, but I did get the events when it first came out, so there was that thing. And also, if you guys don't have the events anymore, you can do the emulator and get it that way. Soundtrack was sick, really do love the soundtrack, and the difficulty, um, it was actually medium to, my, to be honest. Uh, beginning was easy until you got to near the end. Extremely difficult. Um, depends on how well you were leveling up, but besides that, it was a good game. Good, good standard difficulty. I enjoy it a lot. Number 9, Diamond and Pearl. Oh, yes. Just yes. Story was fantastic. I love Team Galactic. I love Cynthia. Jesus, this game rocks. Pokemon was a perfect 
touch for it. The end game stuff was nice. I like that. I do like the end game stuff because there was random events in this game. You can go after uh, Darkrai. You can go after Mew. You can go after the Reggies when, for random events. You can go after Ho Ho and Suicune. And, um, and if I remember, you can go after Lugia as well. Um, there's Deoxys as well, if I remember. And, and also Giratina. There were so many events in Diamond of Pearl when it first came out. It was just such a freaking mind blown. And of course, there is the secret event that nobody got except for Japan. And that is to get Arceus. I had to hack it to get it, and I did like that match, that matchup. The soundtrack, I love the soundtrack of Diamond Pearl, it's amazing, and the difficulty, to me, it's easy. I find it's one of the most easiest ones there, but not super easy. Um, it can be difficult sometimes if you pick the wrong Pokemon for your team, but when you get the right ones, you're doing a, a killer job. Number 8 is Fire Red and Leaf Green. Now. Fire Red and Leaf Green is pretty much the remaster of Pokemon Red, Red, Blue, Yellow and Green. And I did enjoy it. The story, once again, it's straightforward. It's Pokemon Gen 1. You can't go wrong. Pokemon. It's the same thing. Unless you get the national decks and then you can go after Pokemon from Ruby and Sapphire and, Dam and, and um, Gold and Silver. Which I like it because then when you do that, you get the end game. Which you can go after legendaries from the other generations, which is great to be honest. And also going after Deoxys as well for an event, and Latios and Latias. And it was the first time ever you could actually go ahead and start transferring your Pokemon from your old games into the Game Boy Advance. So if you had um, Pokemon in your Game Boy games, you go ahead and then transfer it into your Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. And that was awesome because. That's when you didn't have a clue if you're going to have a shiny or not, and that was sick because you didn't know if you had a shiny or not. And sometimes you could be lucky and you had one. The soundtrack was awesome, to be honest. I did like the the remake of it all. I prefer it a lot more than um, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And the difficulty um, actually escalated a little bit. Actually, actually, it went a bit more difficult, to be honest. Um, probably because the new move sets that they had, so they changed up a little bit, but. Yeah, definitely was um, a killer to be threatened with because it was quite difficult at near the end. But the beginning, like, like I said, can be quite easy. Number seven is Heart Gold Soul Silver. Now the stories are amazing. Like I said, it's just like Heart Gold. It's just like Gold and Silver. You can't go wrong. Pokemon again, can't go wrong. Perfect choices. End game. Yes. Absolutely, yes. There was so much you could do. To be honest, so much you could do. Go after all legendaries, side, special side stories, including getting Zelebi and doing an, un, a special episode um, cutscene with Giovanni and Silver. That is sick. I like that a lot. It was amazing. Okay, it was so good. If you guys didn't get, get a chance to do that, go on YouTube and watch it. It is sick. I was lucky enough to do it when it first came out, but literally I was very close to missing out on it. Difficulty. Um, to be honest, very easy. I think it's very easy in my eyes. Um, didn't really screw up at all in it. Unless you go into the wrong door and you see Cynthia. Oh shit, you open the door and you're going to close it again. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Going through that stats empty house, and then you find Cynthia in there, it's like, oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. So, pretty much, number seven, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Number six, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Oh, yes, this game's good. Story, like I said, just like the original, except for the final bit in the end game, where you get to play as Delta Emerald episode, where you play with, where you um, do missions with the Lurker. But also with a new girl who is trying to tame Rayquaza, where you do beat Rayquaza and have him in the Pokeball. And then instantly you're going to fly up to space to stop a meteorite, which is actually Deoxys. Oh my god, what a swerve. I was not expecting that. Literally, when I saw the destroy the, the rock and then I saw that triangle, I was like, oh my god, I'm not even ready. I don't even have my Master Ball anymore. Oh no, what have I done? 
And I was doing it hours upon hours to try and capture him within a Pokeball because I wanted to capture him in a Pokeball. Not in an Ultra Ball, it was not that cheap, but it was good. Soundtrack, awesome. All the boss music, all the legendary Pokemon bot music, it's amazing to be honest. Difficulty, um, yeah. It's quite a hard one, if to be honest, if you pick the wrong Pokemon. And like I always do, in Ruby and Sapphire, I think the Pokemon have massive disadvantages on other Pokemon. And I always pick the wrong ones at the wrong time. And that's how it made it hard for me. And I do it all the time in Ruby and Sapphire. <clears throat> Number five is another OG, Pokemon Yellow. Now, the story, pretty much you guys know the story very well. It's Ash Catchin. We all know that. It's pretty much Ash Catchin in a Pokemon game. What's not to hate? I love it. Your main companion is Pikachu, who cannot evolve. And there's no other, po there's no other Pikachu in the game. Weird. The Pokemon were good. It's just like the originals, but... There is some Pokemon that were removed in that game. Meaning Weedle, or the Pikachus, and including Raichu, because you couldn't get them. So, it was a bit of a bummer, because I like to get Raichu, but... There is other ways you can get it by trading and everything, but in the actual normal standard game, you couldn't get them. End game. Same again, you can go after the legendary birds or Mewtwo, that was it. Soundtrack, just like Pokemon Red, Blue and Green, nothing wrong with it. Difficulty, um, could be hard, or it could be extremely easy, depends on how strong you get that Pikachu. <laughs> you can easily neglect the Pikachu and start off with your normal team, but for me, I made that Pikachu a freaking tank. <laughs> I give it all the ex I give it all the experience, I give it all the defense boost, I give it all the attack and the special boost. This freaking Pikachu was on steroids at the final boss. Oh my god, it was funny. Because watching me destroy and annihilate Gary at the end of it all was just hilarious. <laughs> so pretty much number five is my one of my favourites, Pokemon Yellow. Number four is Sword and Shield. Now, Sword and Shield, a lot of people find it disappointing, but I find it a godsend, to be honest. It is fantastic. It was new, it was fresh. Okay, now understand this. Story, I did like it, I really did. And I mean, also including the DLC because it, it's connected with it. Pokemon, wow, what a pick from the start of the game. And then putting in the DLC stuff was a freaking godsend. And then the end game stuff. Oh god, the end game stuff. Oh, it's so freaking good. It, there's so much to do in the end game. It's just, I can't really spoil it for you guys because it's that good. Soundtrack. Kick ass. I use it in my YouTube videos most of the time nowadays. So it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to love it because I've got it in the music. Difficulty. Yeah, I can agree. Freaking easy. Super easy to be honest. I think it's the most easiest one out of, out of the lot to be honest. It's super easy So pretty much that's my number four I can't really say much about it though because I want you guys to play it and if you guys want to face me in a, in a Pokemon battle I'll thrash you. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. I'm not very good at battling All right, Number three Pokemon Emerald now a lot of people love Pokemon Emerald a lot probably it could be their number one I love the story with the extra stuff, super good, Pokemon, great choices, great picks, I love it, it was the only way you can get both um, Groudon and Kyogre together, which I liked, the end game, like I said, going after Kyogre and, um, and Kyogre and Groudon was great as well, like I said, soundtrack was bitching because it was more upgraded in Emerald than it was in Ruby and Sapphire, the difficulty escalated, really did escalate in Emerald because I think they did tank down on some of the Pokemon in my eyes because I always used, excuse me, I always used um, Surviper, always did. And in Ruby and Sapphire he was quite good and then in Emerald for some weird reason he kept on dying. I do not know why he just did. So pretty much... To me, I think it got a bit harder, but not too hard. Number two, Crystal. Oh, Pokemon Crystal is a game that I wanted to be remastered. I did not, to be honest, I did not want Heart Gold or Soul Silver to be remastered. I really didn't. I just wanted Crystal to be remastered. That's all. 
Oh, it's just a great story. I know it's pretty much Ruby and it's more like gold and silver, to be honest, but there's a little bit extra bits to it, including Zel including Zelaby and everything, and going after the wild dogs, the mythical beasts, I call them, I call them the dogs. You go after um, Ho-Ho and Lugia at level 70 instead of level 40 or 50 because your main legendary is... Um, is um, is Suicune. The end, it's just such a great game, to be honest. And the soundtrack is awesome. I do like the soundtrack a lot. And the difficulty, I think it's one of the most hardest ones out there. I think it really is quite difficult. Um, not extremely hard, but I do find it difficult. Because some of the Pokemon that you want, you have to be up at night to pick them up. And this was when I was a kid. I was literally playing Pokemon in the middle of the night to get a Ho-Ho. And not to get Ho-Ho, to get one of the night Pokemon, which I think was Murkrow. And then wake up in the day and level them up to, in daytime because it was quite strong. So it was like, oh, what do I do? And also catching Dunsparce was a nightmare. <coughs> but that leaves off with number one. Pokemon Platinum, you damn right. This game has to be remastered. I swear to God, it needs to be remastered now. This game will complete me if this gets a remaster. The story was amazing. The freaking crazy chaos world where Giratina is held was phenomenal. The end game was amazing. The Pokemon were amazing. The legends were amazing. The soundtrack is killer. And the difficulty, yes, the difficulty is quite easy. But that's why I want the remake, because I want the remake to be freaking hard as nails, because I love it that much. I pretty much completed Platinum, to be honest. It was the only Pokemon game I got every single Pokemon in. And, yeah, I pretty much have three copies of it. I have one that's pretty much all, which has my whole entire Pokedex in it. The other one is for literally doing um, Nuzlocke on my own. And the other one is Shiny Hunting. And, oh my god, I freaking love it. It's just so much fun. I do love Platinum. It's my favourite. And to be honest, it's one of the most expensive ones out there nowadays if you're looking for a physical copy. In CX in England, you're getting a physical copy with the game, the manual and the box. You're getting it for about 50 to 60 quid nowadays. A few years back, it was only selling for a tenner, and now it's become a collector's item. Oh my god, I've got three copies of it! Yes! <laughs> and they're all in boxes! <laughs> so, pretty much though, Platinum is my favourite. My least favourite, sadly, is Black and White 1. But I want to ask you guys, what is your favourite? What is your least favourite? And, and also, another thing, what is your favourite Pokemon in the whole entire Pokemon world? If, is it a legend? Is it a starter? Or is it just a random standard baby Pokemon? Leave it in the comment down below and I'd like to see what, you, what, I, what I see. With that being said, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and hit the bell icon to get yourself notified when we're uploading a live stream. With that being said, the people I'm still going to see you guys for subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!